John Gartner here and welcome to my sake education video series. Today I want to talk about sake and temperature or more specifically warming sake. Worded yet another way, I want to talk about hot versus cold when it comes to sake. So to begin with, what is the difference between hot sake and cold sake? Or a better question yet is how do you know at what temperature to drink a sake? How do you know what sake to drink hot and what sake to drink cold? And the shortest and simplest answer to that is, drink your ginjo slightly chilled. So if the word ginjo is somewhere on the label, be it ginjo, junmai ginjo, dai ginjo, or junmai dai ginjo, basically that sake is probably better off slightly chilled than it is gently warmed. Why is that? Simply because most ginjo is aromatic and refined, and heating the sake will batter those aromatics right out of existence. Also, most ginjo is fairly refined in its flavor profile, and often it lacks the idiosyncrasies or the quirks that actually make sake taste better when gently warmed. So for that reason, most of the time, you're going to want to, as a default, enjoy your ginjo slightly chilled. But, and remember, there's always a but when it comes to sake, there's many, many delicious exceptions to this rule. And learning about warming sake and which sake is better suited to it and what you enjoy warmed and slightly chilled is easily going to double your enjoyment of sake. So the first principle to remember is enjoy your ginjo slightly chilled rather than warm. Just know that there are lots of wonderful exceptions. Next, be willing to experiment. In other words, the only way you're really going to learn about sake and temperature and what you like, which is really all that matters in the end, is by experimenting, by trying different sake at different temperature and seeing what happens when you warm it, what happens when you chill it, and how it appeals to you. So experiment. Be willing to experiment. It might be better to begin to experiment at home where you can control the variables more tightly, but whatever works. Just be willing to experiment. However, that doesn't mean that you should experiment haphazardly. Bear in mind some ground rules and some boundary conditions, and the result of experiments are sure to be much more satisfactory. Before anything else, let's talk about the label on the bottle of sake. Very often, at least for sake in Japan, on the back label, more often than not, you'll find an indication of what temperature the sake can be best enjoyed. There's nothing official about this, and every producer does it slightly differently, but they'll give you temperature ranges and how much they recommend the sake to be served at each one of those temperature ranges. It might be three or four stars for every few degrees or something like that. If you're interested in warming sake and want to learn as much about it from the label, from the producer, uh, don't pay attention to the same boy, the milling rate, or to the grade. Look for recommendations like the one I just described on the bottle of sake. Unfortunately, they're not that commonly there. But if they are there, you can trust those temperature recommendations because they came right from the producer. So again, while they're few and far between, once in a while you'll get temperature range recommendations from the producer, and these are often on the back label, but much more commonly in sake enjoyed in Japan and not on sake bottles that have been exported from Japan. So for most of us, we're still out in the cold. Again, no pun intended. So what can you do? Going back to the where this all began, again, start with chilled ginjo. Don't dive right into warming a sake. However, if you taste it, and from your experience or your intuition, uh, something tells you you'd like to try it warmer, go for it. A good point to bear in mind is, if you enjoy the sake as you drink it, as it gets closer to room temperature, that might be something that's a good candidate for checking out at slightly warmer temperatures. So pay attention to what changes as you slowly drink it and the temperature comes up closer to room temperature. Above and beyond that, though, there's a wide range of things, and most of them are quirks or idiosyncrasies, that can make a sake much more enjoyable warm than it is at chill temperatures. One of those is sweetness. Very often a sweeter sake will meld into something more balanced and broad as it comes up to warm temperatures. And, curious though it might be, the exact opposite is true as well. In other words, sometimes bone-dry sake or crisp, clean sake uh, can be really, really enjoyable and very smooth uh, when warmed up as well more easily recognizable as something that's enjoyable warmed is gamey sake. Sake like Yamaha or Kimoto with its higher sweetness, higher acidity, and higher umami levels. Those are very, very easy to enjoy when gently warmed. And not to be forgotten is sake with a slight maturity to it. Very often when sake ages, the way the flavors change make them more unamenable uh, to enjoying gently warmed. It's a great way to get rid of some sake that's just been sitting around the house for just a little bit too long. So these, significant sweetness, significant dryness, significant umami, significant gaminess, uh, are things that you can look for that would be indicators that a sake might be more enjoyable gently warmed or worth trying to warm it and see. 
Another way to approach this is to take any given sake that you're considering warming and consider, does it have anything in it that you think would get hammered or bludgeoned out of existence by heat? Such things might be a fairly fruity aromatic profile or perhaps lots of subtlety, complexity, and layer depth to the flavor profile. Very often these are things that heat can just bludgeon out of existence. So one way to approach this is to look at the flavors and aromatics of a sake and consider, is there anything here that would disappear if I were to warm the sake? And of course, the other side of this coin is equally valid. Uh, another way to assess a sake and see how it would be suitable for warming is to look at the flavors and aromas and see if you can perceive anything that would be enhanced by warming the sake. Trying to imagine how a sake would be improved by warming might be a bit more challenging than looking how it would suffer from warming, but it's certainly worth a shot. And again, as mentioned earlier, another way to assess the potential for warming for a given sake is to look at how the flavors and aromas change as the sake approaches room temperature. That's often a great indicator of a sake's potential at warmer temperatures. In other words, as it gets closer to room temperature, do you like what's happening to it? Do you like what flavors and aromas are coming out and how the sake flavors and aromas change overall as the temperature increases? If so, by all means, warm it up some more and see if you like it even better. And lastly, when experimenting with warming sake, consider what your tolerance for screwing up is. Just be willing to accept that once in a while you'll screw up and that a sake that you've warmed ever so carefully would actually have been better when it was chilled. So that chalk that up to your learning experience and move on. So based on these principles, you can actually at home, on your own, learn quite a bit about warming sake and what appeals to you. Just remember, there are no official rules. If you like it better warmed, it's better. If you like it better chilled, it's better. No one can question that. Next, let's talk a bit about the history of warm sake. Sake has been enjoyed warm or hot for centuries and centuries and centuries in Japan. However, as popular as it was long ago, sake wasn't always drunk exclusively hot in Japan. They drank it cold long ago as well. Some sources say that between May 5th and September 9th, or at least the historical equivalence of those two days, sake was consumed cold, and during the colder months, in other words, between September 9th and May 5th, sake was consumed warm. But this is not universally agreed upon, so who really knows? But it seems that, until about the middle of the 20th century, more sake was enjoyed warm than cold. So warm sake was much more a part of sake culture in Japan than it is today. In fact, until about 50 or 60 years ago, many traditional Japanese restaurants would have a person whose title was okambam, and this person's sole job in the restaurant was to warm the sake. And the okamba would know just which customers liked their sake warmed up to what degree and would remember all that and serve it appropriately. Even today, there are a few traditional simple restaurants that have an okamban, but they're few and far between because the culture of enjoying warm sake has unfortunately faded over the years. Having said that, there is a resurgence in the popularity of warm sake. It's probably been going strong now for the last 20 years. People are starting to remember the joys of warm sake and just a little bit move away from very fruity sake to sake that's much more suited based on the nature of its flavor profile to warming. Along with this trend in warm sake becoming popular is a whole new set of toys and accoutrements that we can buy to properly warm our sake and to enjoy it in style. Then in the 1970s and the 1980s, as Ginjo sake started to take center stage and gather more and more of the spotlight and attention, with its refined nature and its fruitier aromatics, more sake came to be enjoyed and served slightly chilled than warm. At this point, the dichotomy of good sake is served cold and bad sake is served hot came into existence. In truth, this is really never verbalized or really understood to be that way in Japan, but it does seem to take on uh, a presence, a life of its own, this concept, uh, overseas. But since Ginjo has taken the spotlight, in truth, I think a lot of people naturally feel that you chill the good sakes and you warm the bad sakes, and it's just simply not true. Next, let's look at some important terminology related to warm sake. In general, warm sake is known as kanzake. Kanzake, warm sake. Uh, another way to refer to it is okan. They're basically the same thing. Okan is a little bit more polite, but kanzake or okan refers to warm sake in general. If you like your warm sake really hot, order atsukan, which refers to extremely hot sake. Typically, if you serve something atsukan, you're not going to be able to taste the flavors so much, but sometimes that's okay. As I have alluded to earlier, 
Room temperature is a wonderful way to enjoy premium sake and also to sense whether or not it will appeal to you at warmer temperatures. And the term for room temperature sake is jo-on. Jo-on refers to sake served at room temperature. And lastly, the term for chilled sake is reishu. And that's the way that most of us will probably enjoy most of our ginjo, even though that is not the topic of today's presentation. So, remember the terms okan, kanzake, atsukan, jo-on, and reishu. And that will probably get you through 90% of your hot sake life. Next, let's talk about warming sake. How should you warm a sake? What is the proper way to do it? What is the best way to do it? First of all, if possible, start with sake that's close to room temperature rather than starting with sake that's just out of the refrigerator. This obviously isn't a strict requirement, but the less you have to heat a sake, the more easily and more precisely you'll be able to control the temperature and get it just where you want it to be. So if possible, start with sake not just out of the fridge, but closer to room temperature. Next, put the sake into a flask. A tokuri traditional flask is a great implement to use, but anything will do in a pinch. Uh, A bottle of sake should do fine, as will an open glass if you watch it carefully enough. Boil some water, any simple saucepan will do, and then once the water is boiling, turn the heat off. After the heat has been turned off, put the flask or whatever implement you're using into the just boiled water and let it sit there. This is deceivingly important. You don't want to put the flask or the tokuri or the vessel into the water while it's actively boiling. If you were to do that, you would boil off some of the alcohol in the sake and you would irreparably skew the flavor profile. So don't put it into the water while the water is actively boiling. Boil the water first, then shut the flame off, and then put the tokuri into the just boiled and still very hot water. Next, the hardest part. Patiently wait. Depending on how big the flask is and how much sake you have in it, you may want to gently spin it now and then to make sure you have a uniformity of temperature distribution throughout, but just patiently wait. Every 30 seconds or so, which to some people might not be patiently waiting, taste it. Just see how it's coming along. Keep track of the time. When it tastes just the way you like it, and when it tastes appealing to you, it's ready. Note the amount of time that it took, and the next time you warm a flask, assuming all the other conditions are the same, just soak it for the same amount of time, and you'll be ready to go without any fuss. The amount of time that it will take to warm up to the temperature that you like it the best will depend on many things. The shape, the size, the thickness of the vessel, how much sake is in it, the temperature of the sake that you began with. All these things will factor into how much time it takes to warm the sake to just the perfect degree. There are cool toys out there. There are thermometers that will actually measure the temperature of the sake with you. In fact, if you poke around at places selling accoutrements for sake, you'll find these interesting thermometers that have these wings on the side so that when you hang it in the top of a flask, the bulb of the thermometer will remain suspended inside the sake, but not touch the bottom of the flask. These are great implements. They allow you to do things more accurately and more repeatably. So if you can get your hands on one of these thermometers, it's a great thing. Still, I think the best thermometer and the most enjoyable thermometer to use is your own tongue, and I'm a big proponent of testing by tasting. Also, I would advise to err on the side of underheating. Don't overheat a sake. If anything, underheat it. You can always warm it up a little bit more. Overheating a sake and then let it cool back down not only wastes valuable drinking time, but the sake often gets cloying and curiously odd and thick. The condition known as kanzamashi, Uh, So avoid kanzamashi by don't overheating, if anything, underheat the sake, because you can always bring it back and warm it up a bit more if necessary. I'm sure a question on many people's minds is, what about using a microwave oven to warm your sake? Microwave ovens will work in a pinch. They're fine. They do a perfectly good job of warming sake. Having said that, I do admit that they're not quite as good as using water, but microwave ovens will do the job in a pinch. I've done many, many experiments eliminating all variables possible except the heating method. In other words, everything was the same, the sake, the temperature, the volume, everything but using hot water versus a microwave oven. And blind tastings based on my experiments have led to the fact that most people can tell a little bit of a difference, just a little bit, and prefer the sake warmed with hot water rather than being warmed in a microwave oven. However, the hassle factor is huge. In other words, it's so much simpler and faster and easier to warm sake using a microwave oven than it is to do it using warm water. As such, I do encourage people to experiment with using a microwave oven because it'll get you almost all the way there uh, and be a lot simpler and easier. Lastly, if you do use a microwave oven, 
be extra sure to shake and swirl the vessel a bit to ensure you get uniformity of temperature. Because very often when using a microwave oven, the temperature at the top and that at the bottom can vary quite a bit. So be sure to mix it before actually testing it. And the very last thing that I'll say about warming methods, if you're a traditionalist, if you lean in that traditionalist way, you'll definitely want to be using warm water. It does lead to slightly better sake. It's much more enjoyable. The toys are much cooler. And while significantly more of a hassle, it can be a lot more fun as well. So to wrap up this conversation on warm sake, remember that warm sake was much more part of sake culture in Japan 50 or 60 years ago than it is now. However, warm sake is definitely making a comeback. And with it, there's all kinds of cool toys and accoutrements for us to play with. Just remember that the simplest approach is to enjoy your ginjo slightly chilled. But bear in mind that there are wonderful exceptions. And by all means, experiment with sake and temperature. Remember that the good sake is served cold, bad sake is served hot concept is simply not true. And know that you will more than double, more than double, your enjoyment of sake by warming up to kan sake. Trust me on that last one. I hope you enjoyed this short presentation on warming sake enough to go out and try some on your own. If you're interested in this and other sake educational efforts, by all means, feel free to subscribe. And remember, all sake studies always go better with a glass of good sake at hand. Kanpai.